So it's janky combo time again whilst we await the new set to drop and today I want to see how big my mega monster warded turn 3 creature can be, we can even give it haste with the perfect draw. Hey everyone, Hex here and today I'm playing a pretty cool and typically janky deck with a sweet dino combo to help destroy your opponents very quickly. Firstly, if you're new around here, please consider subscribing below for future content, especially with Outlaws of Thunder Junction on the horizon. I can't wait to see what decks we can conjure up. I really appreciate all the support that you give this channel. So onto the deck and it's based around Asian Imperiosaur and Belligerent Yearling. So the Imperiosaur is an older dinosaur which has been around since the March of the Machine Age, but today just as relevant as you can potentially have a monstrous one as early as turn 3. It is pricey at 7 mana but has Convoke with Ward 2. It also ETBs with 2 plus 1 plus 1 counters on it for each creature that helped cast it. I've done the math and I think with a perfect draw and perfect opponent we can get a 2020 or a hasty 18-18 on turn 3. Now the chances of this so early are pretty remote but we have other options, one being Belligerent Yearling. This 2 drop 3-2 dino with trample allows you to adopt the power of a dino ETBing that turn. Have this on the battlefield with a hefty Imperiosaur joining the fray and you get to attack that turn with a seriously big yearling. The rest of the deck is unsurprisingly low cost creatures that can help convoke your dinosaur. We have green one drops in C-Note Scout and Fang of Shigeki, the latter being a card that no one seems to want to attack into ever. We have Ruby in the two drop slot as a mana dork but all these creatures have the green pips needed for your Imperiosaur convoking. I've got Haywire Mites to gain some life, destroy permanents and incidentally being artifacts. Gala Greeters and Voldaren Epicure create artifacts and we need all of these because we always want to be casting our Gleeful Demolition to help get some serious Convoke fodder as early as possible. I'm playing the Huntsman's Redemption to help find our dinosaurs if needed whilst providing a green creature. Song of Tottentans to give haste and if needed make a load of rats and I do love my rat tokens. With Tyvar Stand being a crucial protection spell or a pump spell depending on the board state. I've got 24 lands and that's today's deck. So I've been playing this deck for a while now and I've tried many different cards and many different combos. You may want to add Itsquinth for post Imperiosaur fight spells. Archdewer's Charm is a decent 3 drop instant which amongst other things can help find your dinos. Recruiter and Stoke the Flames work well too as other options and you could drop into Naya too. There are better one drops in white but I felt it was too complicated at that point. Green seriously needs a one drop that creates an artifact. Whilst this is very janky, it does pretty well. You will always win some and lose some, but this little brew is ideal if you want to jam some games on Arena when ranking up isn't your main priority. I definitely want to hear your thoughts on this brew though. Don't forget to drop a like if you can, consider subscribing if you haven't, and I'll catch you again in the next video. Okay, on the play here, and a pretty decent opening hand for us here as we have our Demolition and our Haywire Might. Gonna wanna find a payoff though, otherwise, it's gonna be a load of 1-1s. One okay, well, the Seno Scout has shown us there is an Imperial Sword on top. It's also shown the opponent that there is an Imperial Sword now in our hand. So we're gonna need to get the job done pretty quickly. And we are gonna start off with the Haywire Mite here. And we're instantly going to destroy it. Gonna gain some life here. And make three 1-1s. One -ones. So this is gonna be an Imperial Sword next turn. A 14-14 Imperiosaur, opponent with its Quinth, a card that was originally in this deck. Works quite nice if you've got a massive dinosaur already on the battlefield. But yeah, let's just go for the Imperiosaur. It has Ward 2, so don't think they can deal with it this turn. And they definitely can't because they scoop it up on turn 3. Okay then, on the play this time, and our hand is pretty nice. We'll definitely be keeping this one. Lots of one drops and we have our Ancient Imperious Sword in it. Fingers crossed we get to play the Imperious Sword without too much problems. Find it with a tapped Tranquil Cove, okay. We do find a Yearling. Okay, so Yearling plus Imperious Sword, very janky, but you do get to take the power of the Imperious Sword onto the Yearling when the um, your big dino enters the battlefield. Let's try and do that this game. Find a Gleeful Demolition. Okay, well, we can do quite a lot this turn, can't we? We can make an awful lot of creatures. I am a little bit worried about our opponent's Jeskai deck, that they're just going to wipe everything 
but they would get rid of their own Iconoclast, and you know what, I don't think they're necessarily going to want to do that. So let's go for the Might. This way, the option for us to attack with the Yearling next turn is there. Let's try and get a cheeky little tack in with the Gala Greeters. If they block, so be it. They do not, they go down to 16. Okay, the big turn for them. It is a tap land, which has got to be good for us. And they're looking at our Gala Greeters there with the Lightning Helix. Well, opponent, I think you might have wanted to hit our Yearling or just waited because I think what we can do now is use the Gleeful Demolition on our Blood Token here. It's going to make a whole ton of 1-1s. One we can carefully tap our mana for the Imperiosaur and we should be able to attack him with a massive Yearling here. We have to use our green mana because we don't have any green creatures in the battlefield. That's a 16-16 Imperiosaur, which is now a 16-2 Yearling. Not quite lethal, but they're going to have to deal with this massive creature on our board next turn. They decide to chump with the Iconoclast. Well, this creature has Trample, so they've gone all the way down to 4. Had they not had that Lightning Helix earlier, they would have been on 1. Opponent would get lost on our Imperiosaur. Fair enough, they had a removal spell, but... I'm pretty sure we've still got lethal on board. We have five attacking one ones and they've just got one 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 in defense and we will win there with the Yearling. All right, on the draw. Yeah, I mean, our hands are very similar. We have a lot of early plays and we're just looking to find our big beatdown dinosaur at the end. So I've had loads of different iterations over this deck over the last few weeks. One of my favorites was playing a Naya version. There's opponent here with a deep cavern bat. They're gonna look in our hand and think, what on earth is going on? They go for our Gala Greeters, which is probably the right thing to do there. But yeah, I played the Naya version, which is excellent. Um, you can really get a lot more creatures down quickly, but you do need to still to find the green creatures. But I'm sticking with Gruel here because I really wanted to use this Yearling. I think it's kind of janky and it's exactly right up my street here. Edict for our opponent. Well, we'll get rid of the Might so we can gain some life there. Um, but yeah, I was playing originally as well with It's Quinth. That is a nice way to play post Imperiosaur to do some mega damage to opponent's creatures. So lots of options you can put in this deck. Also using the Arc Druid, Arc Druid's Charm to help find the Imperiosaur was pretty nice. Use the Seno Scout here to have a look on top, and it is a land which we will obviously put in our hand. But you know what? We haven't got much going on here. Let's use the Blood Token to loot away the Gorge. I'm very nervous about opponents having board wipes against our deck. We really need to try and get our big dinosaur down as quick as possible. So we find a forest. And sure, let's just go all out here playing our Fang of Shigeki. I do quite like this 1 1 Death Toucher. Up against other decks, opponents don't always want to attack into it. It kind of does help out, especially against things like Mono Red, if they don't have uh, just a straight up burn for you. Opponent with a face down card here and another Epicure, okay. So we are slow rolling our dinosaur here. Let's see how our deck can cope with this kind of mid range deck. I'm still just putting everything on the battlefield. I'm not scared of board wipes. This is a janky deck. We're going to win some games, we're going to probably lose a fair few games too, so I'm not too concerned. The season's just reset, we're back down to the Platinum levels. Opponent with a tapped Shadowy Backstreet, okay. So they're not really doing too much themselves. The, the bat here is certainly keeping them in the game as we find an Epicure. Okay, so there's obviously a an option here to get some kind of more draw spells or loose spells into this deck because we don't seem to be doing much here. The Arc Druid's Tron would be nice if we were playing it, but we're not. We'll just keep this beat down going though, knowing that there is a dinosaur around the corner. An opponent with Aurelia's Vindicator. Getting in there, getting us down to 11. They like that one. And yeah, I mean, we just... I'm just going to use the Demolition now. Get some more 1-1s, one but most importantly, we can just pop a counter onto our Gala Greeters to get in there for more damage. So we're very hellbent here. 
This is a massive beat down by us. They're down to five. They're going to go back up to nine. We're going to take. Oh, no, they're going to go up to ten, aren't they? They're going to going to take some damage here. And it is okay. Opponent has no witnesses. A board wipe. They do take their own creatures though, so I'm. Although I'm bothered, I'm not that concerned about it. We'll just crack our clue that they gave us. And there's our Imperius. So, okay, one turn too late. You know, I'm kind of glad that we got it then because we would have just cast that last turn and it doesn't have haste. There are some haste givers in the deck in Song of Tottentons, but we don't seem to have drawn those. That is a one mana spell to give haste. If you don't care about making rats, opponent with a Resplendent Angel. And Vran. Okay, well, we are going to be convoking our Imperius or here. And Gleeful Demolition actually means we can convoke it for more. So yeah, I hope the opponent's got a removal spell going because this is going to be a pretty massive dinosaur. We are kind of rebuilt fairly quickly here. So it's going to be convoked for 5, so it's going to be 16-16. I'm just going to tap manually. I just want to make sure that all my creatures are convoked. I wish we had a Tyvar stand. I wish we had a, a song in our hand here as we would be smashing them there, but we don't. They play Shelly. Okay, what does this do for us? Well, let's draw first and see what we find. It's a couple of some forest. Okay, so toughness wise, they have 10 toughness. If they throw it all behind our dinosaur, we're still getting in for six trample plus the six creatures so we have lethal we just need to attack and it doesn't really matter how they block they do have a mana open i don't think that's going to change the fact that they're going to die anyway but yeah i think we've done pretty well here against an ors of build a much more mid-range build they gained a lot of life and board wiped us so yeah pretty pleased with that one did not expect to win that you know all right on the play this hand is very medium. I wouldn't blame anyone for mulliganing this hand. I'm just going to keep it though. We'll drop our Rockfall Veil. Comes in tapped. And yeah, let's see how we get on here. Okay. Put it with a Kumano. So potentially up against Mono Red. Guess we can just double spell as we found an Epicure off the top there with Ruby here. The season has just reset today and I first few games were all against mono red this is the first one for a while okay two Kamanos is going to be a lot for us to deal with here comes the swift spear and they're going to attack as well I'm just taking the damage I mean there is our big boy okay well let's just double spell here we'll go greeters into the yearling and fingers crossed we can keep our creatures alive. If we do, I don't hate our chances in this game, you know. Opponent, I will not block your creatures. Do not blow up my creatures. Just attack and I will not block. Okay, they've gone for the play with fire for my Gala Greeters. And Lightning Strike on my Yearling. Okay, fair enough. They're going to get in there for some serious damage. I didn't expect anything less. Our deck is very janky and it just does not do well against aggressive decks. But we're going to hang in there, see what we can do here with a 10-10 on the board. They're obviously going to be able to attack around us and burn straight into our face. But you never know. Put it with a Charming Scoundrel. Making a wicked roll. And they're going to jam, presumably they do. Okay, well, let's just deal with the Swiss Bear. We could easily be dead here. Okay, Monstrous Rage on the Scoundrel. It's a good job that we blocked the Swift Spear. We go down to one. The Huntsman's Redemption. You know what? The opponent is out of cards. That is a wicked roll. There is a chance, isn't there, that we can win this game? We have blockers. We can play our Redemption here. It makes a 3-3. Three, three. If they just brick off the top of their deck, they're going to have to hold back. So let's get in there with a 10-10. I can't believe we even stand a chance in this game. 
we've kind of stabilized at the the sort of latest possible moment here. Not the opponent down to eight. We'll play our Fang. Please just draw a land off the top opponent. The suspense here. It's a play with fire. Okay, fair enough. They got us. But yeah, we weren't that far away from sneaking a little win there against Mono Red. Okay, then on the play here. Um, okay, do we play the tap land into Galas turn two? Or do we go Fang turn one? We'll go for the Galas, the Gala Greeters turn two play. Put it with an Obscura storefront. Having the Imperial Sword in our hand does make our life a little bit easier. It makes the Huntsman Redemption better in the fact that we don't actually have to sacrifice a creature. We'll definitely drop Gala Greeters here. Opponent has a Swamp and a Cabaretti Courtyard. Okay, they might be able to cut us down. I'm not sure what they're up against. What we're up against? Some kind of graveyard themed land based deck. Um. Let's just go for the Fang here, make a treasure. Then we can use our Demolition to destroy our treasure. We're trying to get as much damage in as possible before they find a way to use something like an ill-timed explosion, maybe. They might be a Insidious Roots deck. Who knows, but we are Imperious Soaring this following turn and we do have Tyvar Stand available to help protect our creature if we need to. Gleeful Demolition. Let's just go for our Dinosaur, I think. I think this is the best port of action. Um, if they have a removal spell, we can just protect our creature with our Tyvar Stand and we'll just make a treasure. Yeah, this isn't too bad. We could have used the Demolition there, but I really want to protect my creature. A temporary lockdown, okay. I mean, that is a very good answer for all of our little our little 1-1s one and our treasure here. But we've still got a 16-16 on the board, so I'm not overly concerned. There's a Gala Greeters. I guess if they play untapped land into Sunfall, that would be pretty back-breaking for us. But yeah, I mean, they're on 7 life. I guess we just pass the turn. Let's not give them an option to use a lockdown again. Okay, it's Thran Portal, which comes in tapped in standard. They do have four mana, but we're just going to protect our creature. I'm pretty sure we've got we've got this win here. We managed to get this Imperious Sword down pretty quickly. Opponent with a Bramble Familiar, okay. Well, unless they're up to some hijinks or shenanigans that I'm not aware of, we should just have a straight up victory here just by smashing them with a 16-16. It has trample. I don't know if the opponent is aware of that. They are aware and they scoop it right up.